Let's give him praise from your heart. Let's give him praise. He's worthy. 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 He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. I will never cease to bless him. He is worthy. He is worthy. To him alone be all my glory, all my glory and praises. Yes, lift up your voice and begin to adore him wherever you are. Begin to adore him. Begin to adore him. Somebody adore him from the heart. Adore him, adore him, adore him. I am grateful, oh Lord. I am grateful, oh. I'm grateful, I'm grateful, Lord, for all you have done for me. Has He done anything for you? Hallelujah. I am grateful, oh Lord. Jehovah, we are grateful. I am grateful, oh Lord. Messiah, Messiah, I am grateful, oh Lord. Oh God, that is upon each and every one of us. Father, we hear of the anger and the wrath, and the wickedness of the evil one. But you have looked upon this assembly as your child. You've not allowed us to suffer. You've not allowed the enemy to come and go, pick as he may, kill and destroy as he desires. Father, we appreciate you for your covering. We appreciate you for your immunity. We say, Lord, continue to do this work. Continue to do this work. Continue to do this work. Under your mighty hands, Lord, we shall rest secure. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Excess luggage. Excess cargo. I've been pressed and pressed and pressed and pressed by this word. And I feel I must release it now so that we can pray together. Excess luggage. Excess cargo. And when I check the dictionary, it says excess luggage is, way, is luggage that weighs more than limit. And that is not allowed on a journey. I'm sure you all are travelers. And excess cargo is a familiar word. One of the definitions said it is luggage that is liable for extra charge. Extra charge. In other words, excess luggage will not be handled free. It must cost you something. I like traveling light, very light. One small suitcase, and I'm on my journey. And sometimes it's unavoidable when you have family. You have to carry all the carryables. But in the Christian journey, you must travel light. You must travel light. I took a long fast one time. I remember I was sharing this with some people. 
And for long into that fast, God didn't speak to me. Only you spoke to me only on the last day and said, you are too fat. So I said, but Lord, I'm not fat, I'm lean. But Lord said, no, I'm talking about the fatness of the soul. Your soul is too big. You need to trim your soul down. And I took to the task of trimming my soul down. You don't blame airliners when they charge you extra cargo because it's, it's expensive. In fact, extra cargoes, they weigh down an airplane. Planes must know the weight they carry so that they can fly. If you want to fly in the law, there are certain things that you can't have on you. Amen. May you not be an elephant in the spirit. Look at Mark chapter 4, verse 35 and 36. And the same day when evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over to the other side. I say again to you, we shall pass over to the side of victory. The Lord will help us. When we speak, we don't speak in vain. We will back it up with what the Lord wants. Hallelujah. None of us will be put to shame. Jesus said to his disciples, come, let us cross over to the other side. So it's a season of moving to a better side. And I see that our journey as Christians is filled with this kind of invitation from the Lord. Christianity is a journey to a good side, something better. Is heaven not a better place? A better place. You can't have Jesus without a, without a change in your life. Christianity is a journey from darkness to light. If you have not made that journey, you are not a child of God. So that is a journey from sin to righteousness to holiness. It's a journey from sickness to health, from defeat to victory, from death to life, from oppression to freedom. It's a journey from hatred to forgiveness. This is why husband and wife who can't forgive themselves, they are carrying ex excess luggage. Are you having this transformation? Are you enjoying your relationship with the Lord? It is from glory to glory. If that is not your story, then there is a problem somewhere in your relationship. You may have to look at yourself carefully and see whether excess luggage has... Uh, you know, excess luggage can keep people from traveling. Pastuche that went uh, to um, Papua New Guinea, when he got to the airport, his excess luggage now that kept him... <laughs> he missed his flight. <laughs> and he was in the airport hotel for how many days? For four days. And he was paying per night there. Extra cargo is expensive. <laughs> it will cost you. If there is one extra cargo that must not be in your life, it is S-I-N. Sin. The smallest ones are the heaviest. The smallest ones are the heaviest. Jesus invited his disciples to the other side. And look at chapter 5 verse 1. And they came over onto the other side of the sea. Oh, hallelujah. He said it and it came to pass. As God speaks in your life, may it come to pass. It is in this chapter 5 that the demon came out from the graveyard. Having 6,000 legions. And they met and confronted the master. The master ministered deliverance. It was on this other side that Jairus' daughter was sick and died. They brought healing. Even they brought resurrection. That the girl lived again. It was also on this other side when they crossed that they met the woman with the issue of blood. For 12 years. And as they encountered her, her issue of blood ceased. And she got delivered from doctors. I pray for you. I pray for somebody here. May doctors not make money in your life. So that's the other side we are talking about. It's the other side of victory against Satan, against his demons. Victory against the threat of sickness and death. Victory against, against misfortune. That's the side the Lord is inviting us to. You are on the side of victory. I rebuke every spirit in your life that is walking losses. See, it is for you to take it and keep declaring it. I keep declaring it and standing on it. And the devil will see that um, 
your confession has changed your environment. But you see, between the disciples and that other side, there were what I call excess luggage that was on them that made it very challenging for them to take the journey. I see many Christians carrying excess luggages with them and they are wanting to go to a better side in Christianity. It doesn't work that way. It's not automatic. Heaven is not automatic. To go to heaven, you must drop off, drop off a lot of things. Crossing over to the other side is not automatic for a Christian. Hear that? Hear that? And let it enter into your spirit, man. You cannot journey with God carrying all everything, anything that you want to. And I'm going to show you three very quickly before we pray. And that's the target of our prayer this evening. Look at verse 36. Verse 36. I give you the first excess luggage on these people. Verse 36. And when they had sent away the multitude. Send with me. Send away the multitude. Say it even louder. They were going to cross over to the other side with a small boat. What would happen if everybody here tried to get onto that small boat? Excess luggage. You cannot cross to the other side with the multitude and with the crowd. The crowd, the multitude, they don't necessarily follow Jesus. They can eat Jesus' bread, but at one time they can say, kill him, crucify him. They have no allegiance. The multitude have no commitment. So we can't follow Jesus very far with the excess luggage of the crowd. Crowds, they crowd out God's power in our life. Sometimes it's the voice of our friends, ungodly friends, friends who believe not. They've become the birds that have taken away what has been planted in your life. And some of us who want to carry our family along. What was Abraham's problem? Abraham's problem was that Lot was his excess cargo. He carried Lot along. God didn't ask him to deal with your excess cargo in the name of Jesus Christ. Excess cargo will bring losses. To bring losses. It can be worldly advisors. It can be a crowd of pressure from your cultural association. And tradition and culture, they fight the culture of the Bible. The Bible says, who by culture and tradition make the word of God of no effect. The pull of ungodly crown is so strong. If you are here and your best friends are the people from our own believers, I can say to you, you are carrying excess cargo. Crowds are excess baggages. So what did the disciples do? They send them away. Send them away. And there are crowds that are not easy to send away. And that is why when we rise to pray now, you are going to join your voice to the prayer of the elect. And say, that crowd that does not want to leave me alone, I tap grace and strength from the church. Let them go away from me. I am not very strong. But one prayer that works for me is when somebody is troubling me too much, I ask God to take them away from me and God takes them away from me. Instead of me moving for them, they move for me. Watch your crowd. Your crowd can make you a loser. Your crowd can take away opportunity. SS Cargo number two is also in that verse 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took even as he was in the ship. That means they took Jesus as Jesus was. Tell your neighbor for me, take Jesus as he is. As he is. As he is. There are many people who seek to modify Jesus. They seem not to like to believe Jesus until Jesus has been modified and changed. Then, until Jesus has been repackaged, then they open up their heart to Jesus. But the Bible says that he changeth not. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him alone. Jesus plus something else is extra cargo. Some people say, oh, except you, except you carry Jesus and Mary. I, 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 I don't want to believe. Some say, except, except it's Jesus and St. Joseph. Except if it's Jesus and Chaplet. Except if it's Jesus and Candle. I'm still surprised that in this 21st century, people are burning red candle, black candle, in this 21st century, and still invoking the name of Jesus. It's ex excess cargo. Some people believe, except I call on Jesus, 
and add incense to it, Jesus will not hear me. If you go to the Resurrection headquarters, you will see Jesus there as one of the prophets. But you also see Los and Rampa added to him. Every addition weakens the power of God. Every addition weakens your ability to journey with the Lord. So take him as, it, as he is. Take his words. I said, there are some people who are not satisfied until they've added to God's word. They've added to it. There are some of you who will not, you will not want to come to church here until we give you a Jesus that allows you to do certain things. The secret to God's power is that I am the Lord. I change not. For Jesus is the way, the truth. No man cometh to the Father except through him. Why do you want to add him? Add another to Jesus. For some today, it is Jesus plus prophet. Bible in the right hand. Red candle in the left hand. Or Bible in the left hand. River water in the right hand. Bible in the left hand. Pigeon in the right hand. Amen. So my brother, take Jesus as he is. Sister, take Jesus as he is. It is very common today for people to come for me to pray for them. And I've made it a point before I pray. I ask you, what am I praying for? Let me understand what I'm praying for. Because pray, you can pray yourself to death as a man of God. Many people want you to just pray. Lift up your hand and pray. And rebuke and bind. And bless me. How can I bless you with evil cargo? How can I bless you? You have an evil mission. I lay my hands on you to bless you. That evil mission, when it backfires, it will draw me also in. It's called partaking in another man's sin. God forbid for me to. In fact, let me tell you, if you have an evil mission, don't come near my office. Amen. A man who is evil and carrying an evil cargo, what you should be pleading for is mercy. You should be saying, man of God, I have seen. How am I to be delivered? Pray that God will help me that I don't go to hell. But my beloved, if you would take it from me, sin is an extra cargo. It will cost you a lot. It will cost you your life. If you can receive that, receive. SS cargo number three. I've spoken to you, number one. The multitudes, crowds, if you can serve God without the influence of your friends and crowds, opinions, if you can serve God, you will make it to heaven. Many people will not make it to heaven because of their friends said. Extra cargo number two. Take Jesus as he is. Don't seek to modify God. Don't seek to modify Bible. There are people who quickly, they, they only love Psalms. Allow the word of God be as it is. Respect the part that you have not yet bowed to. And pray for grace to bow to it. But don't argue to, to shut it off. I have told you it's 66 books of the Bible. And 66 appears to be the number of God. What is the number of Satan? Six, six, six. That's an addition. By the way, better check very quickly. Is Bible you are carrying? Is this is the six books? If you have Bible that has Maccabees, a book of wisdom, the book of Baruch, it is excess cargo. Pray, cry, fast. Do everything you can to bring yourself to line up with it. Let the Bible be the Bible. Verse 35. When evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over to the other side. Verse 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, good thing they did. And I believe that somebody will be sending away the multitude this evening. Number two, they took him even as he was into the ship. No adjustments. <laughs> no, no addition. No addition. I don't like those pictures that paint Jesus as a CC. You know what the CC is? Long hair. And then wears lipstick. Look at them very carefully. After you look at them for a while, you start feeling dizzy. <laughs> Jesus is not a CC. Jesus is a son of God. He's a macho man. Not one wimpy, you know, ladylike looking man. Amen. 
So SS cargo number three. And there were also with him. How many things? Other little shapes. Say that with me. Other little. Other little. Little but powerful. And so taking little ships on the journey it was an excess cargo. It was an excess luggage. It was a mistake on the part of the disciples. They were supposed to have left it behind as they left the crowd. See, why were those little ships extra cargo? You've been to the sea, right? Right? A big boat will always have those little, little boats attached to the side. Excuse me, what are those little boats for? Eh? Emergency. In case. While we're on the journey, <laughs> should the big boat do what? Fail. At least we can use that small one for what? Escape. But the question is, if Jesus is in your boat, can he fail? But Jesus was in this boat. Yet, somebody carried along with him small little sheep, believing that uh, even if Jesus was in the boat, it's not enough insurance. I don't trust this man. Eh? If any storm builds up, he can walk on the sea and go. But how about me? <laughs> that is what faithlessness. That is what lack of trust in the Lord can do. Bible says, without faith, no man shall see the Lord. How rich is your trust? How big is your trust in the Lord? You know what I call those little boats? Plan B's. Plan B. Should plan A, the big boat, not get us to our destination? If anything were to happen midway, we will take plan B, the little boat. A Christian is not allowed to have plan B. We are not allowed to have any other God. Are you allowed to try three gods and two gods and choose one? Only him, only him, only him. Is that right? Jehovah Nisi, only him. Only him. That's Christianity. In trouble, in good times. Only him. But many Christians go around with plan B. You can't have plan B and plan A will succeed in Christianity. You can't lean on another God and Jesus will work for you. It's an ex sex cargo and it has destroyed. While I was meditating on this, I remember my friend, he, he, he just married a wife. He called me one night and said, he said, um, um, say, my brother, I have a problem. I said, what is your problem? He said, my wife has only been in UK now for, for six months. But I noticed that she still calls the former boyfriend. So I said, how come? Are you sure or you are suspecting? He said, no. I, every day when I'm, not, when I'm not around, she calls her former boyfriend. He said, he's a former boyfriend, not brother. He said, yes, boyfriend. What is that lady doing? Plan B. <laughs> In case this man disappoint me, I go back to my former flame. That's the little sheep. And you cannot get to the side of power. You cannot get to the better side with Jesus. And so that's what plan B is. Oh, you've left that boyfriend of yours long, long, long ago, but you still have his number. You still have her number on the phone. This is a former flame, a former fire in your life. But you're still carrying the photograph. In, even in the Bible, inside your Bible. <laughs> that is plan B. And for sure, as long as you keep looking at that, yeah, God will never be free to give you what belongs to yours. You know that that business is evil. That business is against God. Yes, you have broken free. You have confessed. You have... But you have kept that contact and that email just in case. So your plan B is an SS luggage. You have a forged certificate. You've heard preaching on the, on the thing. But yet, you're keeping it for what? You're calculating. Telling yourself that in future, I will use it. That is a sure way to say, God, don't be involved in my journey. Are you listening to me? You have a passport of another country and it's still with you. <laughs> what are you keeping it for? In <laughs> The Bible said, trust in the Lord 
Acknowledge him in all your ways. And he will do what? He will guide. If you want to put this thing to test. I, you know, I have many young people that come to me and they say, Malaysia is hard. Malaysia is hard. No. And they want to make prayer difficult for me. Because when you start telling me that kind of thing, I, I cannot have grace to pray. It's not about Malaysia being hard. It's about compromise. Plan B is compromise. God values faith. God values rugged faith. You throw yourself on God. And that is how to get away from the circumstances in this nation. Hallelujah. What does plan B do to us? Look at it, verse 37. And there arose a great storm of wind. It is possible for you to be in the same boat with Jesus. And yet you're a wicked man. In that boat was Judas not there. So don't tell me I, I, I'm going to church. I'm, I, I'm, I'm part of praise and worship. Um, I'm, I'm helping pastor. I, I furnish his office. Yes, you are in the boat. <laughs> but let's see whether you will get to the other side. Christianity is about who gets to the other side. It's not about who is in the boat. So look at what extra cargo does to the power of God. Jesus is in that boat. And how come the boat is being rocked by storms? With Christ in the vessel, I will smile at the storm. Smile at the storm. Excuse me, were these people smiling at the storm? They were not smiling. They were threatened. They began to cry out in anguish. They began to cry out in helplessness. God is there. Jesus is there. The maker of the sea. What was he doing? Look at verse 39. Look at the irony. What was Jesus doing? Can we read together verse, 39, verse 38? So what was Jesus doing? I want to say slumbering. How can Jesus be sleeping in a boat that is full of water? And a pillow that is soaked with water? Is it possible? It's very possible. What does that mean to us? Whenever you are running the Christian race with extra cargo, right? God will be sleeping comfortably over your trouble. You can shout. You can fight. You can quote all the scriptures you can, but you can't wake him. Amen. I want to be able to get into that place in life where I, before I begin talking, he knows I'm there. What can put you there is to get rid of your excess cargo. Rise up on your feet. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Three solid prayer requests. Do you know how plan B people pray? Father, in the name of Jesus. No stress. <laughs> because uh, what are you saying? Jesus doesn't butter my bread. Jesus doesn't pay my rent. <laughs> so why do I need to stretch myself? But if your only plan is Christ, ah, you will call him until he hears you. And that's what God wants from us. Amen. Lift up your hand unto the Lord. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's begin to thank him. Thank him for his word. Thank him for his word. Thank him for his word. Reposition yourself. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In the house of God, there is joy. The house of God. Oh, hallelujah. In the house of God, there is joy. In the house of God. I want to hear your hands. Hallelujah. God. In the house of the Lord, there is joy. In the house of God. Hallelujah, God. In the presence of the Lord, oh, there, there is joy in the house of God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. My Jesus, conquer Satan. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Somebody, my Jesus, conquer Satan. Hallelujah. Let me hear your hands now. 
Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. My Jesus, God, Satan, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Praise him, praise him, the King of glory, praise him. Praise Jehovah. Hallelujah, amen. I know of a certainty there are those who have been coming here. But yet, uh, bearing charms. Charm is an extra luggage. And it's going to ensure that in the midst of a storm, you miss your deliverance. Certainly, they, oh my, they do. You believe that the crowds around you are too much and you want God to scatter them. Call on God to scatter them on your behalf. Lift up your voice and say with me, My Father, I have heard the word of prophet. I'm crossing over to the other side. I am going to the better side. This is the season. This is the season. This is the season. Every crowd, every spiritual crowd, every physical crowd that is disturbing me, blocking my journey, I command you in the name of Jesus, scatter for my sake. Scatter for my sake. Any man, any woman, Masa Toli Bahasaya, that is crowding out the mercy of God, crowding out the power of God, crowd them out, Lord, crowd them out, Lord, expel them from my life, drive them away from my soul, drive, drive, Lord, expel them from my corner. Zarabaha Santolo Bohosa.